Masters, slaves. Now it's 2019 and anyone might get into trouble for saying that. But today we're talking about breaks, so I think we're all right. Right, so following my first video when I said I was gonna be building this bike, uploaded that, I got a notification through with a comment from someone called Missy D asking if I wanted a radio master cylinder, clutch assembly and levers that had come off her ZX6R. Now dropping a, a few emails back and forth, that's what we're gonna be doing today. So thank you D and I'll see you at the 700. Now if you're wondering what a radio master cylinder is, we'll go down and have a look. Now when I removed the forks, the brakes and stuff came off, so they're already off, they're down on the floor. So we'll spin the camera around and have a look. Right, so this is the brakes that came off. Um, featuring the lovely silver mesh spray paint thing that looks like carbon fibre from about 100 metres away. Now of course there is always the question of why and what is a radio master cylinder. So this is a radio master cylinder. We'll talk about that in a second. The traditional type is called an axial master cylinder. And that is where the, the master cylinder that's acted upon, the actual piston, is in here. And that moves in this direction. Now the lever, as you know, moves in this direction. So those two are perpendicular from each other. It's not ideal. It doesn't mean that it's bad and it's been done that way for years. But it could be improved. Now a radial one, the actual cylinder is in here and moves in this direction. Which is much more in line with the force you apply onto the lever. So it gives you a little bit of brake, better brake feel. Now of course, do I need that? Probably not at this stage, but the levers are nice. And they match. Yeah, the clutch one over there is sort of standard, if she focuses. Whereas that doesn't. Now D has kindly sent these over for a really cheap. And they look pretty. It's a better brake feel. They look pretty and they match. So the actual mechanical change is easy. We just unbolt one. We'll swap over the, this nice little stopper still in. Just to keep any contaminants out. Pop that down there for the moment and bolt back in with fresh washers. Now the washers go in between each end of the bolt you can see that and in between to make sure that all the surfaces seal together and you don't get any leaks. Now the single banjo one. Hmm. Go back in so we have the bolt with one washer on it through one banjo, another washer on it, another banjo, another washer on it, and then into the cylinder. I'm trying to keep an eye on where the, the brake fluid is going so I don't strip anything off. Now, if we get that in. I'm going to leave it on a little bit loose for the time being so I can get the, the assembly up and make sure that these lines are in the right place to head off down to where the calipers will mount. Alright, so we obviously know that the lever will go on the bar here and the calipers are going to run off down that direction. So we know that the lines need to be around there, so I'll tighten them up. So bolting the lever on is a nice case of undoing the Allen keys and in the lever on. Lovely. And the same with the calipers. It's important to pay attention to where your brake lines are going to be going. 
So if I just stuck this caliper sort of round here and whacked it on, not only have I got twisted lines, but it's all rooted incorrectly. So I know they need to come down the front and slip in behind the fork. So I'll run them down that way. I'll make sure they're not twisted up. Which is that way. One thing I have just noticed is the reservoir holder for the standard setup goes onto this little bracket on the radio one it obviously goes onto this little bracket which is fine because that hole looks the same size as what that's in so we'll take out this little rubber doodad technical word so with the doodad swapped over put you in your new home oh look at that made for the job I'll we'll quickly do the clutch one, which is basically just a case of touching it with an Allen key. Magic! Right, so now it's time to bleed it. We need to fill it with some brake fluid, and for that we're going to go from the bottom up to try and drive out all the air bubbles. So, we're going to put this brake bleedy doodad on the top here. Um, find somewhere to sit it Well, as expected, it uh, didn't go particularly to plan. Ended up doing a little bit of syringing and then the tried old method of pull the lever, open the nipple, close the nipple, let go of the lever and pump it out working the calipers and the back. And now we're pretty good. So thank you very much, D. I'm loving how they are on there. Looks a bit better. I obviously need to adjust the lever position, but I'll do that when I'm on it. And it's uh, this now. Yeah. Right. That's that episode done. Next up, tail bits. So thank you very much for watching. That's that one down. I think we've got 100 days to TT. Only a few weeks till riding season. And uh, Easter Sunday is when I will be doing the practical for race school on the bike. I've done the classroom side. There'll be a video about that coming soon. And it's going to be a good year. So if you found this helpful, give it a like, it, it does help out quite a lot. If you want any stickers, send me a message and we'll get that hooked up because there'll be no adverts on this channel. And if you want to support us that way, that'd be great. Thanks again, Dee. I will see you at Southern 100. We'll go and have a pint somewhere. Thank you very much for the little bits. So the cost of this was £80 for the parts from Dee. And if I can find the invoice, we are... £6.18 for the, the brake fluid, so that'll do.